this is a wonderful church with wonderful people. I'm going to need to read this just to make sure I get through it. Um, it's almost exactly eight years ago to the day where I began serving at First Church. And I am so thankful that God has led me to this place. You all are awesome. You've been so good to us and our family. You become my friends. You become like family to us. And we've been loved greatly. And most importantly, you have, you have loved our kids and we have been welcome in this place. And our kids have been welcome in this place just like they were yours, which is mostly good. Um, and we thank you so much for that. We do. Um, that being said, uh, we do have an announcement to make that is, is really difficult for us. Um, and something that we weren't planning for or looking for. Um, but we believe that God is calling us to. Um, this past week, I, I submitted my res resignation here to First Church and the board. Um, Emily and I believe that God is calling us to a new place. We will be moving to Pendleton, Indiana, um, where I will become the lead pastor of Catalyst Church there. There are a number of reasons that, that we are doing this. Um, one that you will understand, or all of you will, I think, understand, is that we'll be moving closer to our families. Um, it'll be about an hour and a half from my parents' doorstep, an hour from where they work, uh, an hour from my brother and our, some of our nieces. Um, and we'll continue to be able to use uh, a lot of the gifts that I, I think God has given us for the kingdom. Um, it's a place that we feel that we can be used in, in a mighty way, in, in many ways, hopefully, as we've been used here. It'll be about seven and a half hours away from Emily's family, which is a lot easier when it comes to traveling than 12 to 11 and a half. And so um, we believe after some time talking and praying uh, that this is kind of the next move for our, our family um, as they are still young, being able to kind of make this move and, and do this. Um, just so you know, uh, as we're getting ready to dismiss here in a little bit, um, our children still do not know because I wanted to be the one to tell you, uh, not my seven-year-old. Um, and uh, so if you don't mind, um, don't tell them nice knowing you uh, as you leave or encourage your kids to do that. We actually kind of have them out, uh, kind of removed from everybody right now. So just, if you know, um, hopefully we're going to be the ones to tell them here in, in a little bit. Um, we want you to know that uh, this is a place that we believe is awesome. This is full of great people um, that we greatly love. Like we, we love you. I love getting to be here on Sunday mornings. I love getting to come to my office and work with my staff. I love our elders, um, the leadership. Uh, you know, it's, I, I love each and every one of you, and I, I hope that you've known that, and I hope I have treated you as such. And I really hope that we will continue to make this place about Jesus and about following him. That's always what I've ho hoped to make it about. Um, and if I've ever made it about me, I apologize. Um, because I believe that this church belongs to God and it belongs to Jesus. And we'll continue to moving forward. We just celebrated 125 years. And uh, by God's grace... This place and these people, this legacy, this faith legacy will go on for another 125 years plus or until Jesus returns. Um, my last Sunday will be November 7th. Um, and I hope to continue to see you all during that duration. And when hopefully I'll be as somewhat well-liked. I don't think anybody can be as well-liked as Pastor John that you had uh, a while ago. But hopefully I'll be invited back and get to see you all here at some point, too, in the years to come as you celebrate the next um, reunion. Um, we really do love you and just want you to know that. The elders are about to come up here. Some of the elders are about to come up here. Um, they are working to make sure that this church remains healthy and staffed moving forward. Uh, they've already been meeting to prepare the church for my absence. 
and um, we'll also be meeting this Monday night as they continue to work on the search committee. Um, so more information will kind of go out as uh, things happen, but I'm going to ask if they would come up and take over. Um, yeah, we love you. We'll be out here. If you have any questions, I'm going to be out in the lobby, and um, we'll talk to anybody for as long as you would like to stay. So when I found out this news on Monday and was thinking of what to say, the first, and Josh just kind of alluded to it, the first scripture that came to my mind was 1 Corinthians 3. And now it's not going to go up. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 3, 4 to 12. When one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like the skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care of how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So as we turn this page, it's Christ who laid the foundation. It's Christ who who we will focus on. We are the church, not one person, not one pastor, not one board member, not one steward. It's all of us. It's not even necessary this building, as he brought up in his sermon, as we still met together in a way during the whole pandemic, because it's us who was meeting. It's us who was following Christ. And as he brought up, we've celebrated 125 years just recently. And there have been many pastors who've served this church. And there will be more pastors to serve this church. And God willing, as he said, maybe in 25 years when he comes back to see us at our 150th, he'll be talking about his grandchildren. I don't want to think about 25 years from now for me, but, you know, you know. And yes, we are starting the process. We will be meeting tomorrow night as a board. And we're still going to have Advent. We're still going to have Thanksgiving, Christmas, family. And we're still going to be meeting together every week throughout this whole time. what I have now and okay. what a beautiful thing to see an act of faith we come here we hear the talk we talk the talk This truly calls for somebody to walk the walk. Well, all of us individually. I know. I know Josh and Emily and their family. I know the home they just purchased. I know the sabbatical. I know the whole big picture that we're all hearing and the shock of it. What an act of faith to do this in the midst of that. Good job.
God has been priming us for years with Pastor Josh. God primes another church somewhere else and has been priming them for years for Pastor Josh and Emily and their kids. I think of somebody in that congregation just out of college struggling with things. They're going to call Josh a friend. I'm grateful for that person. I think of the family who hasn't been to a growth group who gets to approach and have laughter is like a toilet not working and learn how to have fellowship in your home with your children and with other people's children. See, there's glory to be had here, and it's God's. I think of Gideon right now. I had an army of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, an inevitable victory. And God says, if we have this victory, they'll think it was you. Send less. No, less than that. No, less than that. It has to be clear. That I am God, God says, and the victory is mine. Instead of thousands, he sent 300 to battle the, the Midianites. And I believe it says us 450 to 1. And God's people was, were victorious. God has glory to ha be had here. He says, no, it has to be obvious that it is me. I pray thanks for our faith, for our future, where we've been, the beautiful places we will go. We used to have kids' church downstairs, and Miss Betty, don't listen to her lie. She says I was a good kid, but I know that's a lie. <laughs> well, that same person, Miss Betty, teaches my son, two-year-old Michael, the word of God and the love of Jesus. I got gifted my first Bible. It was the message by Pastor Doug when I graduated high school in 2005. I had my valley since then. And it wasn't until I gave it up that I picked that Bible up years ago. I haven't put it down. If someone told Pastor Doug he's not going to read it for years. Maybe he wouldn't give it to me, but it's God's glory to be had. It's his timing. It's not ours. There'll be a day that the good Lord calls us all home. I'll see you all there. But until then, there's work to be done. And it's you who God calls to do it. God calls Josh and Emily. Pastor Josh and Emily. Sorry, we're friends. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Pastor Josh, Dieter the first. There's blessings where he's going, and there's blessings where he is leaving. Remember that. We are God's people, and he is with us. You may be dismissed. <laughs>